y'all, it's West Virginia History with Mrs. B coming to you with a different video than normal. Um, we are here at the Jackson County Courthouse in Ripley, West Virginia. Um, the Jackson County Courthouse was established here in 1831 and this is the third Jackson County Courthouse. If you'd like to see a picture of the second Jackson County Courthouse, here it is. Uh, the courthouse has always been um, he, located here on this plot of land given by Jacob and Sarah Starcher. Um, and Jackson County, when it was established in 1831, was named for Andrew Jackson, who was President of the United States. The Jackson County Courthouse lawn is home to many war memorials and monuments, including the ones behind me for the wars of the 20th century, starting with World War I all the way through um, the action taken in Iraq. Um, but the reason why we're here today is we are here to talk about this brand new bench that is being dedicated by the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, the local Jackson County chapter is the Old Hickory chapter named for Andrew Jackson. Um, and since we live in Jackson County, and it's called Old Hickory because, of course, Old Hickory was one of his war nick nicknames. A lot of people don't realize that Andrew Jackson um, is the only president in American history to be a prisoner of war. He was taken as a prisoner of war when he was a teenager um, because he stood up for his beliefs and he was imprisoned um, by British soldiers who came into his neighborhood. And so uh, the chapter, you know, honors that service and that record uh, with its name. And so here we are with this bench that we are that is being dedicated to Revolutionary War soldiers and patriots from Jackson County, what was Virginia and is now West Virginia. And so we are honoring Patrick Board, James McCown, Charles Parsons, Charles Smith, Joel Buffington, James McDade, Joseph Parsons, Basil Wright, Jesse Hughes, Constantine O'Neill, Michael Rader, and Benjamin Wright. Please join us and my students, my West Virginia history students, as we tell you more about each of these patriots, not only their personal lives, but their experiences in the American Revolution. Patrick Board was born June 12, 1750 in York County, Pennsylvania. Board first enlisted in 1775 for a term of one year under Captain Daniel Morgan. During that term, Board made the famous Beeline March to Boston in the fall. Board then re-enlisted in 1776 for a three-year term and served in the Maryland Virginia Rifle Regiment under Colonel Hugh Stephenson until it was established as the 11th Virginia Regiment. Patrick Ford was in, engaged in combat at Long Island during the defense of New York City in 1776. He was taken prisoner by the British. He later escaped and rejoined his unit. He, until 1777, he was under the command of Daniel Morgan. Detached from the regular regiment, he served as part of the hand-picked light Infantry Corps. Patrick Board was also served under General Anthony Wayne during the Poloi Massacre in 1777. At the Battle of Germantown and Chestnut Hill in Pennsylvania, Patrick Board saw action. He wintered at Valley Forge in 1777 through 1778. Board and his unit captured the British held post at Stony Point on the Hudson River in 1779. Board was an honorable discharge at Newport, Rhode Island at the end of his three-year enlistment in 1779. During the summer of 1781, Board served in the Berkeley County, Virginia militia. After this stint, he was drafted for nine months to serve again under General Daniel Morgan. 
Patrick Ward was sent off to Yorktown, Virginia, where he was placed under the command of the Marquis, Marquis de Buffett. He even witnessed the, the surrender of General Cornwallis at the end of the Battle of Yorktown on October 19, 1781. Patrick Ward was married to Mary Keyser and buried in Mount Olive Cemetery in Rome County. Joe Buffington was born in 1744 in Lancaster, Virginia, though there is little information on his birth or his life experiences. We do know that Buffington had four different wives over his lifetime. His first wife's name is unknown. His second wife was named Frances, and her maiden name is unknown. His third wife was named Elizabeth Logan, and his fourth wife was Sarah Hughes. We also know he had at least two sons result from these four marriages. As an American patriot, Buffington was a teamster for the Continental Line and he paid the supply tax in 1783. The Confederate Congress used the supply tax to support the troops during war. The states also used these taxes to raise money for supplies. In 1797, Buffington purchased an island in the Ohio River north of what is today Ravenswood. Buffington Island paid only five shillings for its island, which is a famous West Virginia history place. Because in because of this, it was the only naval battle to take place in West Virginia, near the island. The island is also made up of 150 acres of fertile soil, and he passed away in 1831. Jesse Hughes was a frontiersman, hunter, and scout. He was born circa 1750 in Virginia and married his wife, Grace Turner, in circa 1771. As a scout, he patrolled hundreds of miles of wilderness all over the Virginia border and western Pennsylvania, down the Ohio River to the Little Canal River, what is now today Parkersburg, and then the Great Canal River at what is now Point Pleasant. He was also a scout in the Battle of Point Pleasant and scouted under Colonel Lowther in the militia of 1781. He took an oath of allegiance to receive a preemption warrant and paid supply tax in 1783. After the Treaty of Greenville, Jesse Hughes sold his land on Jesse's run and moved to Indiana, though he soon returned back to Virginia and settled in Jackson County. Hughes is listed on the Canal County Tax List for 1801, on the Tax List for Mason County from 1805 to 1814, and the U.S. Consensus of 1810 and 1820. He was also listed on the Personal Property Tax List for Jackson County in 1831. It is commonly believed that Hughes served in the Continental Army, yet no proof of his service exists. His most active years were spent on Hackers Creek, present Lewis County, where he was a leader in the warfare with the Indians. His life came to an end on Big Sandy Creek, Jackson County in 1829. A memorial for him was placed in the Proctor Cemetery at Ravenswood, West Virginia. James McCown was born on September 2, 1758 in Frederick County, Virginia. McCown was a revolutionary soldier who was listed on the Mason County Census of 1820. McCown was a private under Captain Baldwin Bowers, Colonel Zane, and General Morgan. McCown was wounded at the Battle of Brandywine in Pennsylvania. McCown died in Jackson County, Virginia, now West Virginia. He was the son of James and Elizabeth McCown, and McCown had one son and one daughter, and his wife was Phoebe Casto. James McDade was a Revolutionary War soldier who was born in 1749. He fought in the 12th Virginia Regiment under Captain William Voss and then later fought under Colonel James Wood and General Charles Scott's Brigade. He fought in the Revolutionary Battles of Trenton, Brandywine, Germantown, and Monmouth. He also fought in Utah Springs where he received a stab wound from a bayonet through his body and a sword wound on his wrist. In Camden, he received a bullet wound to the ankle, rendering him unable to fight. He presumably lived in Hampshire County before joining the Army, as that's where he enlisted and where he returned to after service. He later moved to what is now Jackson County in 1796 and was one of the first European settlers there. He moved to Canal for two years before moving back to Mason County, now Jackson County. While we don't know when his first marriage started, we know it ended in 1810 with his wife dying after giving birth to five kids sorry, 10 kids, five boys, and five girls. He was remarried to Margaret Stewart in 1825, but their marriage was short-lived as he died in 1833.
Constantine O'Neill was born in 1753 in County Armagh, Ireland and died in Jackson County, Virginia on September 16, 1834. Constantine O'Neill enlisted in Kenning, Pennsylvania in 1776 as a private. Constantine O'Neill served in Pennsylvania under Captain Van Swearingen. His discharge showed, showed service from August 9, 1776 to October 18, 1779. A pension was issued to this soldier in 1833. He was married to Catherine Shepherd and he had four kids with her, three girls and one boy. Charles Parsons was an early settler of Jackson County. He was born on April 11, 1745 in Queen Anne's County, Maryland and died in Mason County, Western Virginia on November 4, 1823. He is buried in the Baptist Grove Cemetery a quarter of a mile north of Route 33. In 1976, the DAR placed a plaque at his grave recognizing him for Revolutionary and Indian War service. He had two wives in the span of his life. First, he married Elizabeth Chestnut in 1764, and second, Annie Anna Nancy Flesher Sleet in 1796. Parsons is the son, sons of William Parsons, who came to the eastern shore of Maryland in about 1725. Charles is reputed to have been a revolutionary soldier, having entered service as a private in the Virginia militia in the company of Captain John Harness of the Virginia Rangers in 1775, serving as a scout. Parsons is also considered a Jackson County Patriot because he paid a supply tax in 1783. Joseph Parsons was the brother of Charles Parsons, who was another Jackson County Patriot. Parsons was born in 1755 in Queen Anne's County, Maryland, and relocated to West Augusta, present-day Lewis County, in 1776. He enlisted on May 1, 1777, and served as a private and spy under Ensign William Radcliffe and Captain William L. Jackson. He witnessed the killing of Captain Booth by the Indians in June 1778. Parsons was issued a pension in 1833 in Lewis County and Jackson County. He came to Jackson County in 1801, where he owned 5.5 acres of bottomland near Millwood, and he later moved to Elk Fork of the Mill Creek area. Old Joe's Run was named for Parsons, who was the first settler there. Michael Rader was born on March 8, 1750 in Augusta County, Virginia, but died in Jackson County, West Virginia. He was married to Catherine Long from the year of 1769 until he died in 1839. Rader entered the Continental Army in 1777, and his service contained three months as a private, three months as a captain, and six months as a major. He was dedicated and successful in all three. He marched his troops to Winchester, Virginia before being appointed a major. He then marched as a major to Fort Pitt, which is now Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. During this, he had two companies under his command. Rader not only served in the Army, but he also was recommended to be governor, and he was the overseer of a road, which was a very important job during that time period. After serving, Rader still provided the military with supplies, such as 375 pounds of beef and a bay horse in October of 1781. Michael Rader was a true Jackson County Patriot and a hardworking person. Our patriot is Charles Smith, who was born on June 2, 1763, in Frederick County, Virginia. He first went to the battle at the spry age of 14, guarding prisoners at Winchester, Virginia. He served as a private under Lieutenant Helms, Captain Adam Hiskell, and Captain, later Colonel, Charles M. Thurston, also a private in the Virginia, in Virginia militia. He marched in the year 1777 from Battletown in Frederick County, Virginia, to Fredericktown, Maryland, to Lanchester, Pennsylvania, to Morristown, New Jersey, and there incorporated with a regiment. He was discharged in March of 1777 and returned home after serving six months. In 1778, he volunteered and marched to Winchester and there engaged in guarding some British prisoners. He was discharged in December 1778 and returned home after having served three months. In May, 1779, he volunteered and marched to Harper's Ferry across the Potomac River and crossed into Fredericktown, Maryland, and eventually Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and was employed in guarding the prisoners taken from Winchester, Virginia. He was discharged 
in August of 1779 and returned home again to Battletown. In May 1781, he volunteered and marched through the counties of Farquhar, Culpeper, Carolina, Richmond, and New Yorktown, Virginia. He witnessed the surrender of Lord Cornwallis, October 19, 1781. Smith was discharged in October 1781. In 1836, he applied and received a well-deserved pension and bounty land grant for land in Jackson County. Smith was a very patriotic resident of Jackson County. Born in 1764 in Prince George's County, Maryland, Basil Wright enlisted into the Revolutionary War on September 3, 1779. Wright served at Hagerstown, Maryland, Fort Pitt, Pennsylvania, and Fort Henry in Wheeling. Wright served as an Indian scout and spy at Fort Pitt under Captain William Lewis and Colonel Crawford. In 1801, Wright married Nancy Jones and had three known sons, John Wright, James Wright, and Basil Wright. Wright moved to Jackson County sometime around 1830. Wright was issued a pension in Lewis County in 1834, with that being suspended in 1835, but also later being reinstated, while well also being reinstated. Wright died in 1853 at age 90, however, there are some beliefs that he was only 86. Benjamin Wright, born in 1755 in Washington County, Pennsylvania, uh, who also died in 1829 in present-day Mason County, West Virginia. In between the times, he managed to serve during the American Revolution and become known as an American Patriot. During his time in the Revolutionary War, he served with Captain Jay Wetzel and Colonel McFarland of Pennsylvania. In 1784, he married Syria Elizabeth Casto, with whom he had 17 kids, 6 boys, and 11 girls. He is known in Jackson County for erecting the first Christmas sawmill at what is known today as present day cottage for west virginia thanks y'all for watching please like share and subscribe to west virginia history with mrs b on both facebook and youtube